All right, so welcome to our brand new hypnotherapy training. Uh, on this course itself, what we're going to be learning is how to deal with resistant clients in regards to hypnotherapy, how to deal with mindset blocks that our clients come in with, and how we can easily shift a mindset so the old issues with clients being resistant or not thinking about hypnosis the right way or not even believing in it goes out the window and we can essentially start with a clean slate. So very proud to have on board Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca is going to be joining us through this entire program and we're going to be teaching Rebecca the steps as she's a, a full-time hypnotherapist, teaching Rebecca the steps on how to deal with resistant clients. And for everyone listening at home, uh, the reason we've chosen to go down this way in regards to hypnosis is because it seems to be the most common block and the most common question we get asked on a daily basis is how do I deal with resistant clients? What is resistance all about? How can I clear it? How can I change people's perception on hypnosis? And if this is you listening, you're in the right place because this is what we're going to be going through over the next two to three, maybe four sessions to show the ins and outs on how to treat clients with uh, a stubborn mindset or resistance. So hello, Rebecca, and welcome on board again. Hi, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So before we get started, um, this is the outline of where we're going to be going is more of a formal slash informal coaching session. So our expectations with this process is today on this session itself is to find out what is with the understanding of resistance. What do we mean by working with resistant clients? the mindset we need to have as a hypnotherapist and how we can start to work with clients, even if they are stubborn, even if they're argumentative, and even if they're resistant, and make them some of the easiest clients to work with. So as a hypnotherapist, you've seen many clients. Have you ever had to work with a client that seems very resistant or very blocked to the process that you're using? Uh, yes, definitely. Yes, definitely. You'll find resistance tends to be one of the biggest issues and sometimes it's through no fault of our clients, although sometimes uh, we as hypnotherapists like to blame our clients for being resistant. But there's something that occurs inside of, resistant, of a resistant mindset that we can actually use as hypnotherapists as our formal induction, but also how we can clear any blocks before we actually start the therapy process. Okay, so... Let's get your understanding of resistant. When we talk about a resistant client or an argumentative client, what are your thoughts around that? What does that mean to you as a therapist? Um, you know, just um, they have an idea of how the session is going to go. Sometimes yes. they might be trying to um, help you um, in the session, but like they're, they're trying too much and they're not relaxing. Excellent. Um, yeah, so it just makes the job so much harder. Yes, and it definitely does. And I love the way you put those two, uh, the both those understandings down or two metaphors in regards to resistance. The first one is clients come in with that idea of what hypnosis is. That's the biggest one. I mean that as we get into the 21st century, things like hypnosis, NLP, coaching, personal development, life development, or anything like that is become the norm. Okay. And especially with hypnosis, I don't know what it is about hypnosis. It seems to be the the kid that gets bullied all the time. There's so many different perceptions of hypnosis. There's so many different mindsets about it being bad, about being good, about evil, about you know working with the client's unconscious and everything like that. All of these social thoughts come into the session. And as a hypnotherapist, if we're not prepared for them, we're almost hitting a brick wall as soon as our clients come in to see us. Okay. The second uh, metaphor you gave us was in regards to uh, clients trying too much during a session and not allowing the process to do what it's supposed to do, which is hypnotize them or put them into an unconscious state. And these are two valid points. And it's exactly the reason why we've put this process and this program together, because they are the biggest blocks that therapists come up against. Okay. So the best place for us to start uh, this process, there is going to be a formal induction type process. We're going to get to at a later stage, but I think one of the most important uh, places to start for us as therapists and being new to this process of dealing with resistance is to understand the mindset of a client and how we can break through that before we actually even start. And this is the first point I want to make. And I'm going to leave you with this question and let's see what you can come up with. If a client comes in that is resistant, so they're either uh, blocking the process or they don't believe in hypnosis or any of the above, what would be the purpose of trying to destroy this mindset, so to speak, 
before we actually begin any formal therapy work. What are your thoughts around that? Um, well, if you can basically take like pull apart their beliefs, um, then I suppose they're a lot more open to anything that you're going to do in the session. Yes. Um, and it starts to um, basically prime your session for you know anything can happen. Yes. Absolutely. And what you said there first was absolutely perfect. Think of it like this. Let's say your client has a belief or a block or some sort of resistance in regards to hypnosis. Now, this could be from a session they've had previously that didn't go quite well, or they went through a therapy session where the result wasn't favorable, or they might have even seen a stage hypnosis show. They're becoming more regular to see now, especially on TV, that got them a little bit scared or anxious about hypnosis, but this client still persists on coming to see you as a hypnotherapist. So they come into your office, they sit down, and just through most people being nice, and human beings have a, a, a process just being nice with someone that's trying to help them, they go along with the process, but that's all they do. They're happy to listen to your voice, they're happy to listen to the language patterns, they're happy to listen to your advice in regards to a therapist, but just as it seems you're getting a little bit of headway, you seem to be constantly hitting that brick wall. So as you think your induction is going well, your client's probably playing along with more of it rather than actually going into trance and experiencing what you want them to experience. So if we have a client coming in with all these misconceptions about hypnosis, it does not matter what technique you use. It doesn't matter how good your language patterns are, how good your stories are, how good your process is. If you're going to hit a brick wall every time, what is the point in starting, right? Yeah. So if you can tell your client's being resistant, we need to clear this so we can almost have a clean slate to work with as a therapist. So when we go to use any process after that or any therapy intervention or any story that we're using, it has a place to sit. There's no brick walls. There's no misconception. There's no bad or negative thoughts that are going to interfere with the process. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. So the question is, how do we do this? How are we going to hear and how do we know without assuming, because we know assuming can be our worst enemy, how can we assume, well, without assume, sorry, how do we know that our client is being resistant? Let, let's play with this first. What are the things we should be listening out for or even watching that would let us know that a client is not in the right mindset to begin formal therapy work? Um, in the right in the right mindset. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so, how do we know a client's not in the right mindset? What do you? Th what things do you think they'll be telling us, or what type of things do you think we'll be seeing when we start to either hypnotize them or use our inductions? Mm -hmm. Um. So they will probably, like you said, be playing a, like you'll feel like they're just playing along rather than actually um, experiencing it. And yes. if you kind of. Um, as you get more experience, there is those giveaways um, that you just kind of get to know yes. um, when they're not really there and they're yes. just doing what they think they should be doing. Excellent. Um, so if a client's playing along, what's the number one thing we will not be seeing? If a client is not in trance, what won't we be seeing as a therapist? The unconscious moments. Exactly. So this is a dead giveaway that if your client's playing along or actually in a hypnotic state, is we're missing out on all those unconscious moments. And for those listening at home, an unconscious moment is another way of saying a hypnotic cue, like the rapid eye blinking, the heavy breathing, the relaxing, the shift in state, the confusion, the lack of understanding, the inability to speak or move, all the normal cues that we're accustomed to. If you're not seeing these unconscious moments or you're not seeing that your client is entering a trance state, it's a pretty surefire bet that they're either playing along or you've already hit some resistance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if we continue on with our routine, let's say we have a session book for a whole hour, we're doing our stories and maybe reading a script, if that's the type of therapy that you do, you're doing the Ericksonian approach, you're doing more of a coaching session, and you get to the end of your one hour session, and all your client has done is just play along, what type of results can we expect by the end of the session? Yeah, not, not any results. <laughs> not any, right? And what this does is actually not only negative for us as a therapist, because we didn't pick up on these things, 
But as soon as your client leaves, and maybe they're just being nice and they say, yeah, it was an okay experience, you know, it was good, I felt okay, blah, 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 just to be nice, you have now added to that negative experience and that negative resistance towards hypnosis. You have become another catalyst for the reason they didn't believe in hypnosis in the first place. Does that make sense? Yes. So you're actually cementing in another negative thought, another negative conclusion about hypnosis, which makes any attempt for that client to have after that session with either you or another therapist even harder. So we're doing all therapists, I guess we could say, we're doing all therapists a favor by helping clients, even if this is a session that you do just to break the mindset, it might take a whole session just to do that. So when you come to be therapeutic on another session, it'll be so much easier because everything that has been cluttered in the mind before is now clear and you have a place for your techniques to sit. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So if we're not seeing those unconscious moments, what else would tell us that a client is being resistant? Um, asking lots of questions. Yes. Um, yeah. So what type of questions would let us know uh, that a client is being resistant? And I'll, I'll clear this up, this word of resistant. When we say resistant, there's a misconception for us as therapists that we do wrong as well. We think of resistant as a client not listening, not really wanting change, not really doing what they're told, being argumentative, all of these things. Now, the misconception we have and the persona we put on as a therapist is we tend to blame our client because our process isn't working. And we say to them, you know, if you really want change, you'll play along or it's all about teamwork here. Or we both have to have an equal part in this therapy session. While true, what I want to do is also break that misconception that we have as therapists and know that a client can be resistant and it's okay for us to work with as well. Okay. So if a client's asking certain questions, how do we know they're the wrong questions they should be asking that tells us they're not in a hypnotic state? Well, they shouldn't really be asking us questions um, anyway. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And the most common uh, downfall with this is if they're talking too much and asking us questions about things like, what should I be thinking? Or how do I get through this? Or how am I supposed to quit smoking? Or I've tried that, that never worked. What else can I do? These are all conscious questions. Yeah. If a client is asking conscious questions, how does that detract away from hypnosis, do you think? Or how does that detract away from a client becoming more unconscious? Well, it's keeping them conscious um, and not letting them go into trance because they're obviously they're, you know, yes. thinking too much and they're not yes. allowing. And it's, it comes back to the, the metaphor you gave us before that a client is trying too hard to help us. So they're analyzing everything. They think that if they can't answer one of our questions, especially if you're using more of a, a conversation or a confusional technique, if they can't answer a question properly, they feel like they're not playing their part and they block everything else after that. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. And you can see sometimes a client getting frustrated with the questions we ask them because they don't know the answer. And we know as hypnotists, especially as conversational hypnotists, that it's more important about the questions they can't answer than what they can. Right? Yeah. So what else could we look for that lets us know? We, we're not seeing the unconscious moments. A client is asking too many conscious questions or overanalyzing everything. How, what else could we tell? Or how else could we tell that a client has been quote unquote resistant or difficult? Um, I had one that I was going to say just before and now I've lost it. That's all right. It'll probably come back. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Um, just trying to remember what that train of thought was. That's all right. Well, while you're thinking of that, let me uh, let me add one that would be very common. You've probably seen this. It might even be the one you're thinking about. Lack of attention. Oh, yes. <laughs> Have you ever worked with a client that you're trying to be spontaneous, you're trying to use your processes, you're trying to tell your stories, you're trying to uh, coach them through a series of events in their life, maybe like a regression or something, and they're sitting there just looking at you like they're bored to tears. Yep. <laughs> We've all had it. Now, it's not to say that it's anyone's fault. It's not your fault, but it's also not the client's fault because sometimes a client won't even know they're doing it. And this is what's key with resistance. Sometimes your client will make a purpose of being resistant because they're either protecting themselves from something, maybe a bad experience. And if that's the case, they've got every right to. 
mm-hmm. or they've been screwed around by another therapist before or ripped off entirely in regards to hypnosis. So again, they've got every right to be resistant. Mm-hmm. But sometimes a client may be resisting you at an unconscious level, knowing that they're resisting you, but they don't realize how difficult they're being. So what do you think this is about? Why would this occur? Sometimes, um, you know, not being consciously uh, or unconsciously ready for the change that they think that they they want. Spot on. Absolutely. And this um, becomes quite a conflict inside. A client comes in consciously going, I want to give up cigarettes. But the unconscious mind is not ready or does not trust you or doesn't have the proper rapport to kill the resistant. So as a client is um, speaking to us through the session and we're conversing with them, we get a sudden feeling like, you know what, this client seems like they're in a bad mood or they really don't want change or they're not following along. They must be resistant or difficult. But our client is trying their very, very best to try and help the process along. And you can almost hear that conflict that a client can have with a therapist, but it's outside of their awareness. And as we start to assume, everything gets all mixed up in the mix. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we're working against conscious attention and conscious resistance, but we're also working with unconscious resistance. We're going to play with both of over this program because it is so important that we have both parts of the mind working with us, even the conscious mind, so that we have a clean slate to work with. And they're the main three we need to look out for. Are we seeing unconscious moments? If we're not, it means that trance hasn't begun or we haven't quite got the unconscious attention we need. Second one is a client asking too many conscious questions and quote unquote blocking the unconscious process, which is hypnosis, it's trance, but also a client resisting us without realizing they're resisting us. So it seems we're sort of uh, um, pushed up a brick wall here. There's nothing we can really do as therapists. There is, and this is the first point I want to make and the first, I guess, uh, lesson I want to train you in to understand resistant, okay? Now, this is more of a mindset shift for you. It definitely helped myself uh, when I got taught this. And it's something that it may take a while for you to experience with real life clients before you firmly believe it. So I'm going to give this to you. You can play with it however you like. It's the presupposition that's most important. If a client is resistant, they might not know they're being resistant. So if a client doesn't know or possibly cannot know, We've got no right to blame them for being difficult or resistant, right? Mm -hmm. And there's something about resistance that is actually good for us. There's something about resistance that is good for us. What do you think this would be from a therapist or a client if we see our client being resistant? Why would this be good or could be taken as a good start to a session if a client is resistant? Um. Well, sometimes it could mean that there is a bit more uh, leverage to play with. Excellent. Perfect. Now we're thinking, yes. So it means that if a client's coming in, if they're being resistant, they could be thinking this in their head. You know, this is my last, you know, my last chance. If this doesn't work, um, my life is screwed. You know, I'm never going to quit smoking. I'm going to die. I'm going to be unhealthy, blah, blah, blah. So they might be putting a lot of pressure on themselves, but not meaning to put the pressure on you yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's a good point. So what else What else could be possible? Um, it just gives you a bit more um, of, a, of a mindset, like to be able to explore. Yes. And get, get more information um, <clears throat> about what is, what is going on. Excellent. So would you agree it gives us a starting point? Mm-hmm. Yes. Some of the most common questions we get asked is, I never know where to start. What's the best way to start a hypnosis session? Well, if your client's being resistant, you start there. Yeah. And we're going to look at how we do that as a process a little bit later. What else would a resistant client be giving us that's a good thing? There's one more. uh, There's probably many more, but these are the main three I want to work with. Um, um, So there's probably, I I would say, like the the emotions that are there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we would, we would tease this into leverage. If your client's feeling emotional, frustrated, resistant, even difficult, and they're getting a bit angry with us, it means that we're stirring up some sort of emotion, which is great. Yeah. 
because we know that when we're using emotions, all we have to do is direct the emotion or the energy behind the emotion to somewhere different that's more positive and we're off to a good start. Okay, let's think of some more because there are quite a few. I want to see if we can get this. That was the third one. There is one other one I want to look at because it is important to the process as well. Any other thoughts? Um. Not that, I, not that I can think of it like right now. That's right. Think of this. If a client's coming in and wants to be hypnotized, we need their undivided attention, do we not? Yes. So if a client's arguing the process, that lets us know we've got their attention, right? Yes. Even if the attention we get is negative, it's still attention. Yes. However, if you're using your process and your resistance of a client is coming across as they're not listening to you, which means that they're probably not arguing, what is that telling you? That you need to get the attention first. Yeah. So yeah. the first place we need to understand is even if a client is negatively giving us attention, it is still attention and we can use any sort. Yes. So that's cool. important. Yeah. So just to now we've laid down the foundation of where this process is going before we start to add more things to this and explore what we do, the first thing we have to understand about resistance is it does not matter. Hypnotists tend to get uh, all frustrated themselves if they think, oh, you know, I spoke to my potential client on their phone. They didn't seem that nice. They didn't really seem like they cared about the session. And what we go into the mindset of is blaming our client. We start to say something like, if the session doesn't work, well, it was your fault. You didn't follow what I said or you didn't follow the steps I gave you or you weren't relaxing when I wanted you to relax. It's all about you. I'm going to blame you. Okay, that's one way to do it but it's not a nice place to put a client in and blame all your frustrations on them, right? Yeah, no way. So what we need to do is understand that if it's resistant, who cares? If your client shows up and they're resistant, as long as they've showed up to the session, we can work with it. We know that resistance or being difficult or highly emotional in a negative way is all emotions that we can use later and it gives us fuel and leverage to direct in a certain way but we also have the key ingredient for trance which is we have attention even if it's negative okay mm -hmm. so how do we explore this where do we go from here so let's lay down the scenario that we're going to play with over the next few sessions uh, so we can almost visualize where we're going with this our clients come in they've sat down and let's work with a smoker for this session it tends to be the most common one and client sits down we've done all the paperwork and they're ready to go and we're going to start with a simple question like so why are you here what do you want to work on and a client says well i want to quit smoking okay we, we're off to a start we've asked them and we're getting a conversation going this is just in regards to conversation hypnosis mm -hmm. and they say yep i want to quit smoking and then we say something like well what stops you from quitting and they say i don't know it's just too hard and you think, okay, that's fine. I can understand that. So we ask him, you know, what's hard about quitting? I don't know. It just is. And we think, okay, same answer, but let's keep going. And we ask him something like, well, you, you know, think about it. What makes smoke, what makes quitting smoking so hard for you? And our client says, I'm like, look, I don't know. I just can't quit. That's why I'm here. Can we just get started? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it's not always going to come out like that. But where is this conversation going already? How is this conversation letting us know that our client is quote unquote resistant or protecting themselves from something or being more of an unconscious attention? What's occurring already? Um, they're just, they're not giving you any um, like real answers to work with. Yes. If your client is giving you these off the top of the head answers without actually thinking about it, Regardless of whether they're negative or there's emotion there, if they're just not even considering the questions deeply, this lets us know that there's come across a block. Yeah. Okay. And this is what we're going to name an objection to hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Now, if a client is saying things like, I don't know, it's just too hard, or I don't know, why don't you tell me, or you're the therapist, you need to fix me. That's a common one. We want to take it as a client is either protecting themselves from something or they're trying consciously to follow along, or they just don't understand where this is all going. Mm -hmm. So as a hypnotist, what's the first thing we need to do if we come across this type of attitude? What do you think would be the first thing we could do 
to start to break through this attitude before we move any further? Um, probably one thing that I would do would be address uh, what they're saying to you um, and say, well, we need to look at this before we can make any more progress in the session and put it on them a little bit. Yes. To um, act actually think and, um, you know, because if they're not giving it any thought, then they can't start, you know, the unconscious moments start happening. Excellent. That's exactly what I would do too. And it's exactly the first part of this process. As a hypnotist, we need to avoid taking all this pressure on us. We need to avoid getting emotional with our clients and stop going to that mindset of, oh, I've got a real, excuse my language here, an asshole of a client here. This is going to yeah. be a tough session. Oh, my God. I can't believe the session started like this. If we as hypnotists go into that mindset, what are we doing wrong? Um, we start putting too much pressure on ourselves and yes. stressing out. And then once you are stressing out, you can't... Um, you know, direct your session appropriately. Excellent. Perfect. Spot on. If you're in your own mindset thinking, I cannot believe I'm having this type of client today, you are instantly disconnecting from your client and you're almost going into your own trance while they're sitting there being frustrated. You begin to be frustrated and two frustrated mindsets cannot work together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is what we're going to do from here. If we find that our client is being difficult, resistant, a little bit of attitude or whatever, we need to take it like a grain of salt. Remember, they might not even know they're doing it. This might be who they are as a person to everybody. They might be angry with everyone they speak to. That's just their attitude. That's just their personality. If we find that this attitude is coming out, we need to stop what we're doing. Stop exploring the problem. Stop exploring why they're there. Because instead of exploring the quote unquote, the smoking issue or the weight loss issue, we need to now explore the attitude itself in regards to the premise of the whole session. Does that make sense? Yeah. So how do we do this? Well, there's a couple of things we can assume. If a client's feeling like this, we can assume things like this. They've either been screwed over by another hypnotist. They've had a bad experience with hypnosis. They don't believe hypnosis will work. So we need to now, and there could be many others, but we can hear the frame that's being set. We need to explore what is occurring before we actually start. So if we wanted to find out a client's past experience or their own thoughts about hypnosis or anything like that, what type of questions would fit perfectly here before we actually start being therapeutic? If, if we already know that they've had therapy before? Well, if we don't know, we, if oh. we just find out, if we can just, if we we hear in their voice that they're getting frustrated for some reason or they're just not playing along for some reason, what questions would we ask to find out what's really going on inside of them? Um, maybe um, ask them if they have had hypnosis before. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Be the best place for us to start. So the first step is to understand that resistance is fine and resistance is giving us a clear doorway or a clear understanding of what's happening in our client's mind. The second step is to stop your process. And I can't stress this enough. Don't think that a fancy language pattern is going to break through resistance because it's not. Okay. A fancy Ericksonian approach or a fancy story will not break through a stubborn mind. We yeah. need to almost... Uh, wrestle with this mind to shake it up a little bit and to loosen it, then your processes begin to work. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So where right now is we're going to just get a bit of wiggle room, so to speak, inside their mind. So we're just going to ask some assumption questions like, have you been hypnotized before? Or what are your thoughts on hypnosis? Okay. Or what do you expect from this session today? Okay. But also, and this takes a little bit of uh, practice to do this, is you can almost put it back on your client and say, hey, you know, why are you being a bit of a jerk at the moment? I don't understand what's the attitude about. Yeah. Now, you're going to have to back that up, and we have to do this in a very caring way. We can't do this in a way that lets our clients know that we're getting on at them. But do you see how that could work? Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So I'm now going to play the client. Okay, I want you to ask me any of those questions like, have you been hypnotized before? Or, you know, um, I'm sensing a little bit of frustration. What's that about? Just let me know so I know how to proceed. 
or what are your thoughts on hypnosis or how you're feeling, right? Any question like that with the understanding that now you have dropped exploring the problem and the whys and the whens and all that, you're now exploring my bad attitude, so to speak, or my resistance. Do you see the discrepancy there? Yeah. Okay. So I'm your client. I've given you a little bit of attitude. All I'm answering your questions is like, yep, smoking's too hard to quit. Um, I don't know. You tell me or you're the therapist. You need to fix me. Let's have a conversation and I'll play along. What question would suit you right now? Okay. Um, so I'm noticing, um, you know, maybe a little bit of resistance. Uh, have you had hypnotherapy before? Excellent. And I'm going to ask a question with, uh, yes, I have. Okay. Oh, you have had hypnotherapy. Before. Yes. Well, that's great. Um, and did you find that the hypnotherapy helped you? Um, no, it didn't work at all. I went in for stop smoking and I actually started smoking more after the session. It was really frustrating. Oh, wow. That would have been frustrating. Yes. Um, so well, what brings you here to have hypnotherapy again? Excellent. Perfect. And let me ask you, well, this is a role play. This is important. What was the meaning for asking that last question? What was your assumptions or what was the understanding that you got from just that short conversation? Hopefully everyone at home picked up on that because this is so, 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 so common when working with clients. What made you ask that last question? Uh, well, obviously, he wasn't happy with the last uh, time that he had hypnosis. Yes. Um, and, you know, for some reason, he's decided to go down that road again, which is a good thing. But, um, you know, if he still believes that, you know, from that last session that it's, you know, doesn't work and it actually makes it worse, um, you know, why would he come and, you know, try it again? Excellent. Do you see how obvious that comes across? but we miss these obvious answers because we're too busy trying to be hypnotic. Does that make sense? Yeah. We haven't even started. We haven't started therapy, uh, being a, th uh, a therapist yet. We haven't started exploring the problem. We tried to, that didn't work. So now we have to explore the mindset. So you can hear, if we don't clear these old thoughts and beliefs about what happened last time in hypnosis, do you see how we're going to be blocked at every turn we take? Yeah, definitely. Okay. And this is so important. I'm so glad you asked that question because it is the most common one. You will find your clients coming to see, especially with the way therapy and especially hypnosis, which is a great thing, has been more of an accepted uh, style of therapy, again, which is great. It's come away from the, the dark ages and the bad misconceptions. They're still there, but it's becoming more acceptable. So we've got to think, literally, if a client has failed before in hypnosis, why the hell are they trying it again? So what is this telling us? If a client's willing to try something that they failed at before and they had a bad experience, what is this telling us about the problem they have? Well, the problem is still there, but at least they are um, open to making a change. Yes, absolutely. Do you see that there is unbreakable motivation there? Mm -hmm. Okay. If I went to the cinema and watched a bad movie, I wouldn't go see it again. I wouldn't go out of my way to tell all my friends how bad it was and how crap the movie was and how bad the story was and how the visual effects were were, were horrible and then make a point of going to see it again. I would go see it again if I was hiding something with my friends. Maybe I had an emotional experience. I didn't want them to know. Maybe I cried through a movie or something and didn't want to let my friends know. And I go see the movie because now I have motivation and leverage to go see this movie again. But I put on that front to say it was a, it was a crappy movie. Don't go see it because I'm trying to protect something of my own personality. Does that make sense? Yes. And it's the yep. same thing with your client. If they're willing to try something that has not worked, there is motivation there. Because if there wasn't, they wouldn't be there. They wouldn't mm -hmm. spend a couple of hundred dollars with you if they knew in their mind completely 100% that it was going to fail. So in their mind... They are maybe thinking 99% of hypnosis is rubbish, but there's a 1% chance or even a 0.5% chance that this could work and that is all we need. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we are off to a great start. Do you see how if we just continued down exploring the problem, how this resistance, although we've uncovered it, we're only doing a role play here, would be there waiting for us with every technique we tried? Yes. And let's say after an hour of not picking up on this resistance and we keep thinking, well, 
I'll just push through the hypnosis will clear this up. It will clear the mindset. It will clear the connections, blah, 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 blah. We get to the end. What is our client going to feel about the session? The same yeah. resistant thought they had at the very start, but now you've made it worse. <laughs> and do you see how if we're going to clear this mindset, it doesn't matter what we do afterwards, because if they're willing to put 100% into everything we say, we're in a good place. Mm-hmm. And there's something else that's occurring right here that's important. And again, we've only just played with a couple of questions right here. Can you understand the power of a client coming in and us saying, you know, what happened last time, them uh, letting go of that thought by just telling us, do you see how that allows them to think that we actually care about them and we're actually yes. listening to them? Yes. For therapists, what can happen in the past and something that I came across when, you know, talking to therapists and a common misconception is the hypnotist will sit there and say something like, well, that other hypnotist was crap. They didn't know what they're doing. I'm great. Okay. Mm-hmm. We haven't even done that. All we're doing is basically saying, well, you had a bad experience. You know, I feel bad because I love hypnosis. Tell me about it so I can make sure I cater to the way you want hypnosis to be. Do you see how that's going to work in our favor? Yeah, definitely. That's okay. great. So we've taken a back step and stopped being a therapist and became a human being. Mm-hmm. Instead of blaming our client or blaming hypnosis and saying, well, your therapist must have done this or I'm an expert in this or maybe they didn't do this, this and this and, and chastising every other therapist in the world, we're basically saying, hey, I want you to have a good experience. What was it like last time? I feel bad for you. How about we make sure this session is everything you want? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's a great start. So let's play with this again. I'm going to now have a another mindset issue. So just to recap that mindset issue is I've had a bad experience. Um, that's the thoughts I have about hypnosis. So we need to explore those first. We'll look at how we explore all of it later. The, the, the same system and principles apply. But let's now play with another mindset issue. So we'll start again. This time I'll be a weight loss client. Again, mm-hmm. ask me anything. Let's say you've come to a block and... Um, the block you've heard in the way I've answered a question is, um, I think hypnosis, I think losing weight is going to be too hard. Okay. Mm -hmm. So ask a question again around the mindset, not the weight loss problem. And let's see where this takes us. So you said that you think losing weight is, is going to be too hard or? Yes. Going to be too hard. Okay. Is that because it has been in the past? Excellent. So we can go down that road. Absolutely. Okay, what other road could we take? Um, so what do you, what is it that makes you think that? Excellent. Okay, so again, we're still relying on past experiences. And let's say I came across with an answer sound like this. Well, um, I haven't tried anything. I just think it'll be hard. Oh, okay. So you've never tried anything? No. But, okay. Well, um, what is it that you know, makes you want to try hypnosis. Excellent. Um, I had a friend who succeeded very, very well, um, Mm -hmm. but I just think it's going to be really hard for me. So you had a friend that succeeded with hypnotherapy. Yes. Um, And you believe that with having hypnotherapy, you can have the same results, right? Yes. Well, I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you said that you hope so. Yes. That seems like there's a little bit of doubt there. What's that about? Excellent. Glad you pick up on that. Do you see how what just occurred right then in that short 30 second chat? Do you see how we got stuck on exploring the weight issue and forgot about the resistance? Mm -hmm. You'll hear this when you listen back and it's very, very quick. Okay. What's occurring right now? And just for the role play of the client, Okay, and I run foul of this as a hypnotist when I was seeing clients as well. I'd always miss these points. It's it's easy with foresight, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, Is a client said something like, um, I think it's going to be easy. Um, And that's the keyword I think. uh, Sorry, I think it's going to be hard. That's the keyword I think. But I have no experience to tell me that it will be. Mm -hmm. Can you hear the conflict right there? Yeah. Okay. How can a client know something's going to be hard if they haven't even tried something? Yeah. So there's already a uh, a locked in premise inside a client's mind that says this, and these are the conflicts we're playing with, is consciously they're saying I want to lose weight. Unconsciously, 
They're saying it's going to be hard. Putting those together, I have nothing I've tried, so I really don't know. Can you hear the loop and the conflict right there? Yes, definitely. Okay. It's a massive conflict. Yeah, really big. And again, do you see how if we just keep proceeding down the weight loss thing, trying to find why they want to do it, how they want to do it, blah, 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 we're still hitting that concrete wall every time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you see how if we just continued in that same vein of conversation, how would it just kept going around in circles? The same sort of answers would have kept coming up or the yes. same themes would have been present. Yeah. Okay. Now, what you picked up, and I did that on purpose, was that small bit at the end, which was great listening on your part. And it was very small. I think our client said something along the lines of, I think so, or I hope so. I hope so, yeah. That small bit of doubt will grow over time. Mm -hmm. Especially when they're, in a, when they're more unconscious, if you're lucky enough to get there, that doubt will expand across the whole session. And that small bit of doubt will always be present. So it doesn't matter how good your process is, now we're dealing with that small bit of doubt to see mm -hmm. how that works against us as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now we've hit basically every wall along the way. Yeah. A client's got a little bit of doubt. You've ba They basically said, my client, my friend had great experience. I hope I will too. Mm -hmm. So now we've got to deal with making sure they're 100% on board. Yeah. Okay. Excited about it. There has to be some sort of emotion if there's that small bit of doubt, and it can be very small, and you may hear it in a client's voice. You may hear a little uh, tonal shift when they, you know, for example, let's say you uh, catch up with a friend and you go see a movie and you walk out, we use the same movie theme, and you walk out and go, wow, that was great. I loved that movie. What did you think? And they say, yeah, it was really good you know there's something happening inside their mind although they've expressed it differently. Does that make sense? Yes. It's like a client saying, yeah, I really want to lose weight. <laughs> yeah, I really want, yeah, I really want to give up smoking. Mm -hmm. There's that little bit out. So we need to listen out for these things. Yes. So the key here, although we've only just looked at uh, two ways here, is as soon as you hear resistance, doubt, not having the right emotion or leverage, you need to stop what you're doing and explore the mindset, explore the attitude and explore what's really occurring. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to give this one more go. Okay, I'll now be a client that's got anxiety. Okay, mm -hmm. and at some point I'm going to keep the conversation going around in a circle and I'll try and give you some little seeds of thought along the way. Mm -hmm. And let's have a, a longer conversation and I will let you know I'm going to get more resistant if you don't pick up on where I need you to go. Does that make sense? I'm going to chuck you in the deep end right here. Okay. Okay, so thinking caps on. Let's play with this. You've asked me, so why are you here? And I said, well, I get anxious when I drive my car. And you might say something like, so what makes you feel anxious? And I'm going to say, I don't know, I just do. So that's what we're going to start with. Okay, so where do we go from here? So you said you don't know, you just do. Yeah, I just get anxious and I want to get rid of it. That's why I'm here. Okay. Um, and you said it was just when you drive your car, you don't get anxious any other time? Yeah, I think it's just the car. Oh, you think that it's just the yeah, car? Yeah, it's just anxiety. I just want to get rid of it. Okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, so can you maybe describe what you mean by anxiety? Um, I just feel really nervous in the car, start sweating, and I'm just sick of it. Okay. So is it... When you're just sitting in the car or do you actually are you is it like you're driving the car just all the time oh just all the time okay um and is that if you're a passenger or if you're just driving yeah it's just all the time i'm just curiosity? anxious all the time just anxious all the time okay um so you're wanting to do hypnosis for it right that... yeah yeah i got told that i should do it so i'm here okay uh, do you have any had any hypnosis before? Or? No. Um, to be honest, I don't really believe in it, but I just got told it should be good, so I thought I'd give it a go. Okay. So um, you don't really believe in hypnosis, but you just want to thought you'd give it a go anyway. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So well, what is it that you um, makes you not believe in hypnosis? What is it that um, 
you don't maybe I feel like maybe you don't understand about hypnosis yeah I saw a stage show um, and I got pulled up on stage and it didn't work for me um, so yeah it just wasn't wasn't good okay so you do understand um, or maybe you don't understand uh, that sounds really bad that's fine <laughs> keep going you're on a good you're um, doing well um, there is different forms of hypnosis and um, stage hypnosis is very different kind of experience to conversational hypnosis, mm -hmm. um, which is what I do. So um, if I understand if you didn't have a good experience with the stage hypnosis, mm -hmm. uh, that could definitely, um, you know, taint your ideas about hypnosis. Yes. Um, but the way that, you know, what we're going to do today is just going to have a nice little chat and you don't need to worry about anything. You can just relax and um, we're going to explore your mindset about anxiety and um it's really easy you don't have to stress or worry about doing anything so um excellent pause right there great job <laughs> brilliant so what process did you start to put in place to deal with this mindset and i will apologize that's a horrible client and for people listening at home very rarely you will get clients like this um, because usually you'll pick this up on the phone and you'll be able to either say no i can't help you uh, in yeah. most cases or you'll be able to uh, shift this mindset before they come in and see you to get rid of the attitude. So that's just for those listening at home. If you're not more fluent with clients, don't expect all clients to be like this. But remember, if they are, by the end of this training program, it will not matter because you'll be able to deal with resistant, angry clients, negative clients, or even clients that are a little bit out there. You'll be able to deal with them all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what process, what, what made you go down uh, that road with that little conversation and where were you headed? What were you trying to do? Um, I, I just wanted to basically open up the client's mind a little bit um, because, you know, obviously we know as hypnotherapists that, um, you know, hypnotherapy can vary and especially with stage hypnosis, um, you know, that's not like what we do at all. Yep. So um, I just wanted to maybe like open up the client's mindset a little bit mm -hmm. um, and relax um, their ideas of what was going to happen um, and, you know, start to basically uh, not say that what the client knew was wrong. It's um, very difficult to do without saying it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard not to come across um, a bit rude sometimes, but it does happen. Yeah. But just basically explain uh, how, you know, how we work and what, what it is that we do um, so that they're feeling you know, like that their experience in the past isn't going to be like what, you know, what they're going to have um, with you. Excellent. Okay. And the way you did it was a very pleasant process to go through, which was brilliant. You got the priming sequence there. There were some themes chucked in. There was some positivity on your side. And it might be enough to shift a client where they say, oh, you know, I didn't know that. Well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me tell you, and this is not to uh, say what you did was incorrect because there's no incorrect. Okay. I just yeah. want to give you some more food for thought. Let me ask yes. you this. Do you think your client cares about what you're telling them? Um, possibly not because I don't feel very open anyway. Yes, um, and that's the key. I was actually, yeah, like going to basically stop there and then ask some more questions yep. because I, I was feeling like um, I really do need to just explore the mindset a bit more. Excellent. Let me, yeah. let me give you like this, and you're 100% correct. Just by that little process, if you went into starting to ask some questions about it, you might be able to get a little bit of feedback and find out if what you've just told them has actually affected them, which is great. Yeah. I was glad you were thinking that. Let me give you this. If you're at the start of the conversation, let's back it right up, and you're, you're asking your client questions and all you're getting is negative, 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 what are the chances they're going to start to feel that? Okay, yeah, probably pretty high. So it doesn't matter how that, yeah. nice you are, how much you're teaching them, okay, that is always going to hit that negativity. Mm -hmm. It was Erickson, I think it was Erickson's daughter who said this perfectly, um, and she's a psychotherapist, I believe, as well. Um, we're not there to teach our clients anything. And this mm -hmm. is something we as hypnotists, and I was taught this when I did my clinical training, that if a client is stuck on a negative thought on hypnosis, we need to tell them what it is. Mm -hmm. What are the chances our clients care, know what you're talking about, or really aren't in the place to be taught anything because all they want to do is get results. They don't care what style of hypnosis you use, how many certifications you've got, how many clients you've worked with. That's the last thing they're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
what we can do at that point, and like I said, that was a very um, uh, negative client, is match their negativity. Let me back something up, and I think this will have to uh, um, express it a little bit differently because that was all off the top of our head. The client's mm -hmm. saying something like, well, um, I don't think it'll work or I don't really believe in hypnosis. Okay, we could come back to the question like, wow, okay, so why are you here then? Mm -hmm. I'm not quite following. Um, if you don't believe something's going to work, why are we even bothering today? Yeah. You have to back that up, I understand. You do not say this with an expression like, you're wrong, I'm right. Yeah. It's more of an expression like, I'm not sure how to deal with you right now. I'm trying to help you, but you need to want the help as well. I care for you, but I can't chastise you at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Or another way, and they're very similar in process, is we need to put the attitude back on them and say something like, well, you know, you told me you had a bad experience with stage hypnosis. You told me that your friend said you could, you should come here. You're not even sure it's going to work. Wow. So you're putting a lot of faith in me then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What I'm saying, the words are irrelevant. What's the principle I'm highlighting right here? Um, well, highlighting their, their mindset. Yes. I'm putting yeah. it back on them. Mm -hmm. And without words, basically saying, I can't work with this mindset right now. Yeah. You need to give me a little bit. If all you're going to do is have a bad attitude, whether you know you're doing it or not, I can't work with it either way. Mm -hmm. So let's come to an understanding that we both have a role to play here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So never feel bad. If you do this with a kind heart as well, it will come across different. Remember, an unconscious mind will always connect with what you're thinking unconsciously. Okay. We mm -hmm. know this. That if your client has this attitude like it's not going to work, I don't really believe it, we need to put it back on them. It is very hard to win a conversation when you're on the back foot. Put it back on them and say, well, if you don't believe hypnosis is going to work, you had a bad experience with this, you're here because your friend told you that it should work, why are we bothering today? Yes. Now, I'll leave it there. We put some pressure on them by looking it into their eyes, and we have that caring attitude. But could you imagine saying that with a smile on your face? Yeah, what completely mood, disarming. <laughs> yeah, what mood would that set? Um, they probably, well, you're obviously caring, but exactly. they're going to feel a, bit, feel, feel a bit like apologetic. Yes, um, yes. Like, oh. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's what I want. I'm not saying to them with a... Uh, while gritting my teeth and shaking my fist at them. Yeah. I'm saying this with a little uh, smirk on my face. Look, look, I know what you're saying to me right now, and that's fine. I'm here to help. I'm not the bad guy. So why are we here today then? And if you almost make a joke, like you said, it will start to disarm them. Mm -hmm. And then it may come out something like this. Oh, look, I'm really sorry. What it basically is that if I don't quit smoking today, my wife's going to leave me and I'm feeling very pressured right now. Yeah. Now that was previously hidden. Why? It could be a couple of reasons. Maybe they didn't feel the need to tell you or they're protecting themselves against something. Mm -hmm. Remember if someone had, and this is in life in general, if someone has bad and a bad attitude, a bad personality, and we think, oh God, I hate talking to that person or that they're, they're not very friendly. It could be something they're protecting themselves from in life that you're starting to violate. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, uh, we have a young child who was bullied at school. Okay, They were yeah. bullied by other kids. They never made friends easily. They were always teased and picked on. And now this man goes up through his life and becomes an old man and starts to hate kids walking on his lawn. Okay, Or feels the need to tell young people how they should treat older adults. Okay, yeah. or feels the need that if you're lining up in the same line as them, they should go first because they're the adult. All about respect. I mean, I'm sure you've come across people like that before. I definitely have. Yeah. And if we turn around and go, oh my God, what a grumpy old man. I'd hate to be like that. We have to think of what they did as a child and what they had to go through. And now their personality is reflective of past experiences. Does that make sense? Yes. So without having to go into it, you know, the whole childhood thing, because that really doesn't matter for hypnosis right now. We just have to take it as you're not being mad at me. This is just the way your personality is because you're probably protecting yourself from something or you want to make sure you don't want to get screwed over by me. Mm 
And I'm cool with that because I wouldn't want either either. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's just recap just quickly. We've done a little bit of talking right now just to show you where we are. The most important part of what we've gone through is as soon as you hear some sort of resistance and objection, this could even be objections for sales when you're selling your business. You have a client objects about time or money or something like that. Um, in regards to therapy, it's the same thing. Is to stop the process you're using. Stop the story. Stop this and find out what on earth is going on inside their mind. Where did this objection come and what's it all about? Okay. But also as well, we need to at some point resist trying to teach our clients something. Definitely teach them when they're in a positive mindset because that's a great place to do it. I mean... When a client's in an unconscious trance or an unconscious moment and we tell stories, that's basically teaching them something, right? Mm -hmm. That they're in a positive place where those lessons can be learnt. Okay? But when they're negative and they're feeling down on themselves and all those past experience are being revivified, whatever lesson you give them is going to go through one ear and out the other and it's not going to adjust their personality in yeah. some cases. Yeah. Okay? So what's your understanding so far? about what we've gone through? Um, so basically, we, you know, there's no point proceeding with a session um, if you can feel that your client is being resistant and you're not really getting anywhere because, you know, you're just going to go through the session, your client's not going to be open, you haven't made friends with the unconscious mind mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and they're not going to take on what you are saying as much as they may seem like they're playing along with it because yes. they've paid for the session and they feel like that's what they're meant to do. Uh, it's m much better if you can see that resistance and they're you know openly being resistant and you can then explore that mindset um, and you know, get all of those things that they may have been feeling unconsciously or hiding, mm -hmm. um, get that out of the way so that you can get on with the therapy session and it doesn't have to take long. Mm -hmm. um, you can just easily, you know, have a, a quick chat for a few minutes mm -hmm. and find mm -hmm. out if they even um, are able to, you know, work with, with the problem. Maybe yes. they aren't yes. ready to actually deal with it. So Excellent. And I agree with everything. The biggest uh, principle we've covered today is... As soon as you get resistance, stop what you're doing. Explore the resistance or the mindset, not the problem. Yeah. Because yeah. it's going to start to sound like this. If you keep missing the point of exploring the resistance, it's going to come out like this. Let's say you're working with a weight loss client and you keep saying, you know, why do you want to lose weight? Well, I want to lose weight for my kids, but I think it's going to be really hard. Okay, so what will losing weight for your kids do for you in your life? Well, I have more energy. I'll be able to live as a happy person, but I think it's going to be hard. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you're a more of a happy person, what does that do for you as an individual? Not a mum, not a daughter, for you individual. What does that do for you? Um, well, I'd be more confident in myself. I maybe uh, look at getting, you know, dating again because I got screwed over in the past, but I think it's going to be really hard. What's the same resistance that keeps coming up? Uh, they think it's going to be hard. Yeah, and it will loop around over and over. And the main point is, they won't even know they're saying it. It'll be yeah. unconscious mind saying, hey, Rebecca, I'm trying to tell you what the issue is here. Mm -hmm. Listen out because I'm going to stop telling you after a while. Yeah. And yeah. as soon as you drop what you're doing, because you hear, you keep hearing that same theme of, I think it's going to be hard. And you drop the idea of weight loss as, you know, where do you want to head with your weight loss journey and just hit the, what makes you think it's going to be hard. You get things like this. Well, I don't know. Okay. So if you don't know it's going to be hard, what makes you think it's going to be hard? Um, um, and you start getting an unconscious moment from that. Mm -hmm. It means you've hit the nail on the head. Once you explore that, what you do afterwards will be easy because mm -hmm. you have a fresh mind to work with. There's no block. You've torn down all the walls and found out what really thinks is going to make it hard. Because if you give them the best techniques in the world, the best steps, you know, go to the gym, go to the personal trainer, come and see me for this many sessions because this is the pack I have and yada, 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 that resistance will always be there. Mm -hmm. Hypnotic techniques do not um, uh, destroy resistance, okay? Picking mm -hmm. them apart does. Yes. Finding out why it's there, what makes you think, how did you get to that point that makes you think that? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what we've looked at today. 
again, to reiterate, the most important principle is if you hear resistance, stop what you're doing, explore the resistance. If you explore the resistance, that could be three quarters of the session done for you. Then whatever you do after that is easy because there's nothing that's going to block it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. any questions from where we've started today? Um, no, no, I don't have any questions about that. Okay. Now the questions you ask to set up for next time, uh, it doesn't really matter. There's no secret questions here. There's no, you have to say a what question, then a why question, then how. We'll get to that at a later point, but there is no sequence. It's the principle that's important, is you pick apart that mindset, clear it, untie all the knots, so to speak, and then you have something clear, lucid, and crystal to work with. And that's what's important for us as therapists. We need to always remember that even if we have resistance, it gives us a great place to start. Mm -hmm. It means yeah. that if there's resistance, they must care about something. Yeah. If they didn't care, there'd be no resistance. Why would there be? They don't fit together. <laughs> okay. So if we yeah. get resistance, you should almost thank and high five your client because it means they care about something. You just have to find out what that something is mm -hmm. all through all the resistance they give you. Yeah. Okay. So play with that. Have a think about that because next time what we're going to start to do is we will do some more role plays, okay? But we're going to just extend the conversation and show you how you can actually start to direct uh, the resistance, so to speak, or the energy of the resistance into actually using that as your formal induction, but how to create the circumstances where trance can occur, even if the resistance remains throughout the whole session. You can do stuff in the background, so to speak, without the resistance being affected at all. So there's actually two ways you can play with it. Yeah. Okay, so we'll uh, pick up from that next time. If there's any questions, please let me know. But well done so far. That was a simple mindset shift. Play with it with your clients coming uh, coming to see you the next couple of days and uh, just see if it actually creates a different environment for you to actually work with trance. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, right. so again, I'll have this recording sent over to you so you can re-listen to it. Until next time, well done. And we will catch up again to uh, play with these resistant mindsets once again. Excellent. Thank okay, you. Okay, you're very welcome. Bye for now. Bye.